an interface cable for connecting Chinese and Kenwood HTs to smartphones for APRS use. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, in a short I released, uh, probably about a couple of weeks ago, I alluded to me purchasing this cable off uh, AliExpress. I'll bring it in for you. I've got the camera lagging again. So, this may not be the final version because I found there were some problems last time, but I managed to overcome those, thankfully. So, this is a cable in question. It's basically Kenwood style connector on one end. Let's try and focus on that if we can. If it will focus, might not do. Is it trying to focus somewhere else, I think. Because these things always happen. There we go. Good enough. So that's the Kenwood style connector on one end. So this little box in the middle, which I will be opening. And at the other end, a connector to plug into your smartphone or tablet. In this case, it will be a tablet. Now, I've done some testing uh, behind the scenes already. So... I've got an idea of what's going to happen. So, I've got this uh, tablet here. This is this is a, an old tablet I've had lying around for a while. It's not my most recent tablet because uh, I somehow managed to sit on that and uh, break the screen. Well, I'm guessing I sat on it. I don't actually know what happened, but I have a feeling because it is a little bit bent, so I probably did. Um, but I don't remember doing it, so that's the thing. So I've downloaded from the Play Store rather than directly from the website for it, APRS Droid. Now that's not something I've had installed on here in a while. In fact, I've not had a lot of things installed on here in a while, but APRS Droid, there it is. So as you can see, I've already been doing some tests behind the scenes. So obviously I've got radio that can receive APRS already, which is this FT2D, so. That will be in shot as well. So I've got the tablet. So the idea with this cable is that one end of it goes into something like this. So the headphone socket on this is on the other side. Okay, so that's now connected to the tablet. The other side goes into a, any radio with this connector on it. So I'll just pop that down a moment on top of the 991, which I haven't moved from the last video. Actually, it's not going to stay there, so let's let it slip down there. So let's grab one of these. This is my KGUVD1P that I've had for God knows how many years, long before I got licensed, actually, I bought this. So if we switch it on, that should be in Vox on the APRS frequency, because apparently, according to the blurb on online, do you need Vox activated to make it actually transmit. But I have found it doesn't actually do that. And I will be able to demonstrate that. So if I put that there, it's just picking up interference, possibly off the tablet. But there's not a lot I can really do about that if interference from the tablet is getting into it right now. So I have a ferrite on either end, which might be prudent. So I'm just going to stand the radio off to one side a moment. I'm going to press start tracking. So that's now, that's now APRS running. Now... It has sent a packet out, but this radio hasn't received it, and it didn't even receive a transmission. The radio didn't go into transmit. So if I push send position, then at the same time you watch the S meter on the, the, the FT2D, nothing happens. It doesn't transmit. So I'll have to find out why that is and uh, fix it appropriately. So bring the actual radio back in it's going to pick up the noise from the from the from the tablet so for send position should be a red light come on let's try that again well, you guys can see a red light didn't come on so it didn't do it but i've been i'm able to override it by keying the radio and then sending that packet so that's not ideal i'll have to find out why that's going on but it does receive just fine which I will also demonstrate. So I've got bringing the FT2D again. So we'll beacon transmit. There we go. No problems at all. So that's the cable demonstrated. So I'll stop tracking and we'll put the tablet to one side. 
So let's have a look at what's in the middle of it, because I think that's going to be interesting. And to do that, trusty friend, a spudger. This is a nice Asamo spudger, and they're usually pretty good, because I've just had to break into a Calex Smart socket recently, the one that actually controls my APRSI gate. So, <laughs> yes, that's... The capacitor inside, a low ESR one went pop and uh, getting it out uh, proved to be pretty destructive. So there we go. So um, let's try and get this started to get into this box in the middle. Oh, that was easy. So there's the box. Let's open her up. Let's have a look inside, see what we got. Ooh. Oh, that's tiny in there. Oh, that's very tiny. Oh. I don't like surface mount very much, but I'll try and zoom in on that so you can see it. It's probably going to go all grainy and horrible. It certainly has. Can I fix that with a fill light? I kind of can, but it won't focus on... There we go. So that's effectively what's inside this. Two wires, this really tiny little printed circuit board, which I'm really not wanting to remove, populated by some resistors and capacitors that's all that's really in there not a lot you'd think there was a lot more in that but no Let's see if i can yeah let's try and be careful with that and zoomed right in as well so it's not helpful Ooh. Let's see if we can bring that back into shot so you can see what's actually on it Ooh. this is going to be the fun part because i'm going to have to try and focus on that now Okay, will it focus? Yes, it has. Excellent. So we've got some capacitors on there and some resistors. There's another position for another resistor there at the on the top. Top left, bottom right, same again. So that's effectively what it is. I could just build that myself, actually. So it works. It does the job, but it's not keying up the radio, which is... A little annoying. So I'm now going to try and reassemble that. I've zoomed right in now, haven't I? Yes, I have. Let's try zooming the other way. There we go. Yeah, I'm getting used to the zoom controls on open camera because I don't use them very often. So if we pop that back in there like that. Pop that back in there like that. The board isn't quite where it was. It's just loose in there. Then we'll put the lid back on. There we go. That wasn't actually too difficult to get into, and that's what's inside the middle box there. Now, I'm not sure how the phone end or the other device end is wired. So that's the phone or whatever device you plug it into end. I'm not sure which way that's wired, because there's two different ways to wire it. And uh, it all depends on the last two two contacts closest to the top because I, I believe some iPhone some iPhones and some Android devices usually differ so like if you've got an iPhone it's one way to if you've got an Android device it's another way so I'm not sure this would work with an iPhone so but maybe that's why there's an adapter supplied which there is an adapter supplied so I'm not sure how to get that to key up into to transmit using Vox on the radio. I've tried three different radios. I've not just tried that radio there. I've tried this one, this uh, Perfung GT3, which is just a bow thing, really, for all intents and purposes, well, it is. And this other auction, this one, is a KG UV60, which is the 2 meter, 4 meter version. So, obviously, doing it on 2 meters. So, you know, that's all there is, that's all there is to that. I've not metered the cable out, I've and I've not really seen any other way to actually make the Vox transmit. But at least it's delivered, and it's uh, all well ready to rock and roll, really. <laughs> Apart from the little the little uh, trans transmitter issue, so. 
Because, like I said, it, just re it requires Vox. You can't really key it up any other way, which is a little annoying, but it works. It certainly works to receive, that, and that's the important part. I've not tested it out of the house or anything. Um, so my mobile antenna certainly doesn't work, and... Uh, yeah. Most of the power would probably get lost in the, in the coax cable, and that's not ideal. So I've got to get that fixed. So... I'm just going to have to see if there is actually a way to make the Vox work. Because I've set the Vox to maximum, to 10, which should be the most sensitive setting. But that doesn't seem to work, so... Yeah, the Vox is off on this radio. So... Let me try that again so I can show you what the settings are for the Vox on here. So, go into Vox. If I was to... But then I've got to be absolutely quiet. Okay, so that's the lowest. And that's the highest. That should be the most sensitive. I'm not going to set that because otherwise my talking will set it off and that's not ideal. So that's the setting of the Vox I had. And obviously, it should still be set on this radio. So I'll just wait for the FT2D to... Be quiet, because I don't want to be transmitting voice on 1448, if I can. Yep, as I was just showing you there, Vox 10. So, I'll have to find out why that is, because I would like it to actually work properly. But, it's receiving, and that's the important part. So, I'm just going to... Have a look at the order on my um, uh, screen. Uh, just to see if I can find any information on that. Yeah. And I paid £5.12, and 12, I think it was, for this uh, from AliExpress. Uh, I'll probably pop a link into the description. So, just having a look at the reviews on the AliExpress listing, because they might give a clue. Yeah. Yeah, so it's probably going to take some, some uh, fiddling around to get the audio working. I could try another device if I want. I could even try my personal phone. We can give that a go. So I do have APRS Droid installed on there. So let's we'll see if I can find that. Just to see if it will transmit. Because I might as well see if I can get it to go whilst I've got the video going. So APRS Droid. Um, so I need to change the preferences in that. So... Connection is currently internet, so that needs to be changed to audio AFSK. Uh, I'm going to keep everything as it is. Clear the voice frequency, because I don't need that part. Clear the comment field. It's fine, so that's all okay. So, let's see if I can get this to work with my phone. So, my personal mobile phone I use day in, day out, which shouldn't require that on in an adapter because I found op Oppo phones to be okay. So let's plug it into a radio and let's see what happens. So that's now going into this radio. Now turn the radio on. So that's on the highest Vox setting possible. Let's see. Start tracking. Allow APRS Droid to uh, keep while the app is in use. So let's see what happens. Okay. okay.
Now it's not transmitting. At least I don't think it is. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's not transmitting, so that's not ideal. So it's not working with my personal phone either. <laughs> but that's okay. I can bring an update once I've figured out what's going on there because I'm going to try and play with that behind the scenes when I get a moment. So it was only about five or six quid, and uh, if it didn't work either way, then it would have been a good source of the connectors. I'm going to turn the radio back off while I start disconnecting things again. And I'm going to stop tracking on there because if I leave that running, it's not going to end well. So I think I might need the adapter for that. I don't know, but that's just for the microphone side. So it's a good source of a piece of cable with a Kenwood style connector on it like that. And a mobile phone connector on it like that. I could just bypass the little circuit board in the middle or I could find out what was causing it not to not to work because it could be just weak audio at the at the radio end. I don't know. Because if it's weak enough not to activate the Vox even in the most sensitive setting, then that might be something I'll need to look at. So it could could just be that. So that's the mobile phone to radio APRS cable uh, from AliExpress. Um, I'll give it a I'll give it a three out of five because whilst it's receiving fine, it's mm, or at least on my um, uh, Huawei tablet, it didn't seem to do it on my phone. I might need the adapter for that. Um, it's not transmitting at the moment, but that's something I'm going to have a look at behind the scenes and hopefully fix. So, 7-3 for now, and I'll catch you in the next one. And don't forget, you can hopefully hear me on 145 Alive, which I will also be filming for this channel. So, 7-3 for now, and I'll... Hopefully catch you on the next one, maybe on the air during 145 Alive, if you're taking part in that. Send three for now. Okay, some bonus extra footage after I've just been having a bit of a play about. So, if I can get that into shot so you guys can see it, it might be difficult because it's standing on top of uh, the 991, wand, which obviously I've not moved since the, la the last video that involved it. That's going to be difficult. So... The bonus extra footage is this. So I've put it back on. I'm just going to try and get where you guys can see this. So there's the... Oh, it's already sent it. It's done exactly what I want, didn't really want it to do right now. <laughs> well, there we go. So... Let's bring that up so that, so that band is highlighted. So you guys can see it a bit better. So if I press send position. And there we go. And that is on Vox setting 2 of the KG UVD 1P. So yes, it is actually transmitting. So there we go. <laughs> I've managed to solve it, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to tell it not to do it anymore. So let's stop tracking. So there we go. It works. It's doing the job. It's getting into my eye gate. I'm pretty sure that that can be proven. In fact, because my eye gate is like literally behind me and it is powered up. So let's get rid of the stuff I was looking at there. I need to go into my browser and I need to find aprs.fi. And we need to zoom roughly in to... Oof. There we go. I've zoomed in so much that you can't really tell where I am, but, you know. So, there is... If it'll focus. There we go. And that's it there. So, I press info. There we go. So, that's, that's it there. And indeed, it has gone in through MB7 UCG, which is, like, literally behind me. As we speak. So. Good. That's what it's all about. Experiment and. You know. Try and find out what works. And it seems Vox setting number two. On that 
Wuxen works absolutely fine. So, there we go. Result. So, <laughs> so all you need is a mobile device. I'm using this Huawei tablet that is, well, quite some years old now, I'm thinking. Uh, I did have a Lenovo one that I could have used, but I have broke the screen on that, and that is in need of repair. So, I'm going to get this put together, and I'm going to get back to work, I think, because I had to come home, especially to let the postman in to be able to deliver that. And, because I live in a block of flats, but he got into the building anyway, as it turned out. And he managed to get it through my letterbox, as it turned out. So there you go. Well, it wasn't the only bit of mail I got. I got something from my mobile phone provider, I th think it was. And also from an organisation that I will not go into mentioning. Because it's best I don't give them the publicity. <laughs> so, seven threes for now.